Good evening. Welcome to our Christchurch Reflection. I'm Jeff Marshall Taylor, one of the lay readers at Christchurch. You might like to pause this for a moment and uh, reach for a Bible and turn to Mark chapter 9, verse 42. Mark 9, 42, and we'll come to that later. First, a moment of quiet prayer. Our preparation. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's reflect on the day that's passed. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy on us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We receive God's forgiveness gladly. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Some words from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. And now we come to our reading, and this is from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 42. And Jesus gives warnings to his followers, so to you and me, um, about facing up to sin. Mark 9, 42. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble or sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Wow, powerful stuff. I mean, Jesus comes out, guns blazing, like Clint Eastwood in a pale rider. 
okay, it's hyperbole. All this talk of murder by drowning, the cutting off of hands and the tearing of eyes out. Jesus wants to shock his followers, and that means us too, to shock us into recognising that there's much at stake in establishing his kingdom. So they, and we, need to give thought about the impact our lives are having on others. Could it be that something I've said or done is actually causing someone else to stumble or sin? It'd be better if we took some drastic restorative action. Better than to be cast out into the spiritual rubbish dump, Gehenna as it's sometimes known. He then says something curious. Everyone will be salted with fire. On this occasion, he's thinking of the purifying qualities of both salt and fire. We are to apply the purifying force of the Holy Spirit to our lives. It may be painful, like cauterizing a wound, but it's necessary if we are to be effective followers of Jesus. Elsewhere in the New Testament, Jesus says that he wants his people, us, to be the salt of the earth. He tells us not to become rubbish Christians, but to make sure we have about us the flavour of Jesus. Well, having fired his devastating bullets, Jesus blows the smoke off his gun barrels and he returns them to their holsters. Now we've got the message, it's up to us to do what he asks. At all costs we are to avoid sin and its consequences. Why? For the sake of his kingdom. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, Lord, while waking. Guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The words of the Song of Simeon. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now in a time of quiet prayer, we're going to bring the needs of the world and others known to us who have the need of our prayers tonight, we're going to bring these to the Lord in the quietness of this moment. Let's pray for the world and all its turmoil and for its leaders. We pray for our nation our government and all those working at the moment to fight the coronavirus. 
We pray for our communities, where we live, where we work, where our contacts are. And we pray for our loved ones, separated from us at the moment. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Now the Lord's Prayer. Let's bring our prayers together as we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, Collect, visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessings be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in the eternal city of which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Concluding responses. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. Amen.